So, Park, welcome to this debriefing session and um, congratulations on scoring a 720. Good quant score, good verbal score, V39. Let's kind of start with what does it feel or how does it feel? It it feels good, honestly. Um, I thought I could score a little, little higher, but yeah, as soon as I got out of the room, I was jumping in there and just fisting. Uh, yeah, I, I was quite happy with the score at that time. I, I, and part of it was also because because that match your brother score like he had a seven twenty you have a seven twenty yeah, that that was that was that, there's always that going around in my head so we we scored exactly the same marks in our board exams as well uh, somehow that that happened um, same subjects similar similar backgrounds but yeah it, basically it was because I attained the score which I wanted for my ISB YLP application. Okay. So tell us a bit about what is it that you do and then, you know, what is it that you plan to do with the score? Let's see, you talk about ISB YLP. So just let's kind of chart what do you do and what do you expect to do in the next three to four, two to three years before you start your MBA? So right now I am a third year student at Shahid Sudhir College of Business Studies. I gave the exam to apply for YLP as, as, as I just mentioned. So you can apply to that program in your second last year or your last year. So that is it. Uh, that would be a deferred MBA admission. So I would, even if I get an admission, I would have two years to work. So I plan to work in, uh, in management consulting if I get an opportunity to, and then go to ISP uh, basically. Okay. Yeah. And I have my third year ahead of me. So. I, I, I will be looking for placement opportunities and then work in different sectors again uh, a little and then go for the uh, go and work and then go for the MBA. All right. Okay. Sounds good. So let's kind of start with, I, I asked you this question earlier, like how did you, why did you choose the EGMAT course? What were the challenges? That, so that's kind of, what are the challenges that you had when it came to the GMAT and then how did you choose the EGMAT course? So, um, GMAT was something I al I was always told that you need to be very consistent with uh, GMAT. Even if you give, let's say about two to three hours a day, you have to be very consistent with uh, GMAT. And I ha I struggled to find that window of three, um, three to four hours. I know it's not uh, very difficult as a student, but yeah, you get into a habit of doing certain things. So that was the first challenge. And um, EGMAT came easy to me simply because of the fact that my brother was already involved with EGMAT. He he used EGMAT three years back. He gave it up. Uh, he he gave the GMAT to got a 720 once again. Um, and even in the college, it was quite the norm to go ahead with EGMAT for your preparation. So EGMAT was the was quite came quite easy to me. And then I just started using that. He started using it for verbal, which was the which was the popular option. For mm -hmm. quant, nobody really focused that much. So it wasn't, nothing was really that well known for quant, but verbal for verbal, it was, it was the epitome. Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. You said that. it's one of those things where it's very difficult to, to break the, the brand image that you have. Um, if you look at the stats in the last two years, since we, so we launched a new quant course, what your brother did in quant, if you, if you did a bit of VG mat, uh, not even a single question out of that's there in the current course. So, um, and, and since we launched that, uh, we've delivered uh, about 70% of all Q49 plus scores that have been reported on GMAT Club. So, so but it's just, and people still know it's just for verbal, um, or, or they primarily consider us verbal. And part of it is because, again, you know, as you said, you prepared um, uh, for the entrance exam for your college. A lot of people prepare for CAT and, you know, that kind of gives you that strong point. So verbal. So you started. What was the first thing that you started with, or what was the first thing that I you started did? with? Length. So I did obviously went through the initial videos, the intro videos. I not how to operate the whole uh, dashboard, yes. and then I straight I straight away started with verbal. Started making notes. Did the whole process. Did not really skip anything. The application files, the quizzes. Did it as it was, and I think that was quite cool. I, it worked well for me simply because I I practiced a lot of the concepts along along the course and that worked well for me honestly so when you went through this intense correction course what was you know what was something that that kind of stuck to you with, with regards to oh, this is what i thought sc would be but this is slightly different or first of all um grammar was not my strong point honestly to begin with english is not a uh, grammar is not taught in our schools in india i can say i can vouch for that so i i the first thing i when i was studying for e, for the gmat through the course i was like this is the stuff which you should be taught in school and i was quite surprised why are we being taught stories in english literature and stories in, in the school so 
it 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 was a little daunt, daunting for me i honestly wasn't i did not know what adverbs was before or before attempting the gmat and before attempting the course course itself so it was a little da- daunting for me but yeah it it progressed in a way and some sort of concepts there were some concepts buried deep in my mind and they sort of came back to me while i was doing the course and um i just had to power through through those 10 days when i was doing the sentence correction part and once i was done with it it didn't it didn't really feel daunting or daunting for me students do say that it's difficult to learn those rules hmm. i used a te- i used a technique which i used back in my school days to learn my physics formulas and that was just going through my notes every single every single morning first day it will take me one and a half hour second day it will take me one hour 15 minutes and at the end of the day before attempting the final gmat i did the whole revision in 10 minutes and th- that's how it it just happened for me so i i think this is a very important point it's just you know people who are successful are successful not because of their intelligence it's because of their good habits and and you you continue the habits that you had earlier that made you successful don't let go of those habits that's a thing that's really important to know um and i'm glad you made notes uh, overall so then you went from sc to to cr and and how was the transition or was it sc to rc i think it, it, yeah i did cr first uh, before rc people did told uh, people did, te- did tell me that um, cr generally comes e- comes easier to indians a little compared to rc since we do not have a reading habit as such um but yeah uh, but um, i i did not really care in that moment i knew that the rc goes was a little shorter in in the duration and i wanted to complete the better chunk of it the most difficult parts first that is why i picked the sc first as well so d- went through the cr course um quite uh, so the pre thinking and the whole process it mm-hmm. came quite handy i can say for that uh, i can say that for sure i i went through the whole process it it wasn't very difficult for me honestly mm-hmm. uh, the 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 uh, the pre thinking part and those processes which were mentioned i tried using them in some ways it wasn't really very successful while attempting my mocks and uh, various tests mm-hmm. but on the final day it was it came to my surprise how how i i how i would just pre think an answer i i would see an option and i would just take it i wow. move on uh, so i didn't know how it came to me but yeah on the final day it was there throughout the preparation so something so, clicked on that day for you yeah so uh, right. we, we would think uh, i gave the quant first i was very worried about my quant even though uh, my quant had has been generally strong uh, but for the preparation i sort of neglected it um did i was making too many silly errors while giving my mocks and on the final day i i, I was hoping for a 50 i, I would be happy with the 50 q 50 um i i i was stuck on the first question it took me 6 months to, uh, six uh, six minutes to do the first question wow it was a it was a word problem i it would have been easier easier if it would have been a simple equation i would have been i would have been able to solve but i had to comprehend the language then solve the question it's one of those things with a word problem question if you miss a couple of words you it just messes exactly. you up big time and given the fact i was very nervous for the first question uh i i got even more nervous when i wasn't able to comprehend the uh, comprehend the words of that word problem mm-hmm. so that took a lot of time uh, somehow i i don't know how but i i, I had to do 11 questions in last 11 minutes oh, which wow. i i knew i i wasn't on the right path definitely at that moment um, somehow powered through it took the break and i was just telling myself that you could have scored 49 and that would have given you an opportunity to score 720 which is your target score so that is something which was possible i went ahead gave the verbal section um since i was i was worried a little, little about my timing so i did it rather quickly and somehow once again i at the at the end of the day i had 10 minutes left and i was done with my verbal section wow. and i was very surprised how you get <laughs> overcompensated yeah so i was surprised either i was going to score a very good a very good score for for the verbal part that was i i i i i thought anything above 30 or 39 would be a good score for me at that point so i was like either it's going to be that it's going to be a good score or it's going to be something in the 20s for, for even for verbal so fortunately gave the whole thing and i i i, I scored a 39 and a q49 which was and yeah that was the prediction i made that you can still still score a 720 and that is what happened that's excellent i am i must say uh, i 
I, I think the piece that was there was, I mean, you did not do as well on the quant side, but but it just, just you didn't give up on the test. I've seen people give up on the test. And, and, and you really, I mean, and kind of you had some learnings that you applied immediately and, and without losing your focus. I mean, otherwise, I mean, V39 is a 90th percentile. Uh, almost a 90th person that that's one yeah, just 86 87th i think 88 88 so so um and just shy of this so which means you kept your focus even though yeah uh, you you were kind of racing through which um, is commendable so um let's kind of look at this so uh you prepared sccr and rc wobble was your primary weakness um other than using the course and learning the methods how uh, uh, how did you use data in scholarium and in mocks to to enhance your preparation so um analog was one of the major things which i used i would keep a note of what uh, what was going wrong honestly the analog the template had a lot of details i had to cut down on some details because it it actually takes you more time to fill in an error than to make yes. that error itself. So um, I was just trying to save that uh, save that time a little. Aerolog was one thing which came in handy. I knew for from my pep preparations beforehand uh, with the DUJAT exams which I which I gave for the college mm -hmm. that errors Aerolog is something which will be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. And second mocks, I I was um I was very I was super invested in mocks and, and I wanted to give more and more mocks, but I knew that. GMAT mocks are a little different because they are a little difficult to obtain compared to mocks for other exams, just because of the fact that it is computer adaptive. Mm -hmm. So uh, mocks was something which I used uh, for my preparation. Um, error log was something which I value. Scholarium, I used, I used it to test myself. Mm -hmm. I did not use it a lot to practice it, but yeah, I would do, I would solve, let's say a few OG questions or do something. And I would, I would just get, uh, drill down a, a weakness of mine try to correct it and then uh, take the test if to just to just to diagnose whether that mistake was corrected or not that is how i used the scholarium you also kind of you know were in communication with people from our support team right uh, what did you write to them about so uh, uh, it was mostly about uh, i think quant score that um, my i was struggling at the end of the day with quant mm -hmm. um, that was the general suggestion uh, that that was the uh, that was the question i asked um, for the most part and honestly more than uh, more than a mistake of material or anything like that it was just i was being lazy with quant i i was a little overconfident with quant that i would be able to get it at the end of the day so um, that was it at the end of at the at the Towards the end, I was quite worried about quant. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is going to be the first time when uh, quant is going to let me down. Uh, and and the only good part about uh, the only good part about my preparation at that point of the time was that the problematic area was quant. Had it been verbal, I would I I would not have the confidence to actually correct it in that two or three days. Mm -hmm. Given that it was quant, I had that confidence that I can still make it mm -hmm. through with with quant. So you focus so, on quant towards the end. Yeah, absolutely. My scores with the uh, with the verbal section were quite consistently. They were quite they were consistently above thirty six with the mocks, and mm -hmm. I thought that 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 is good enough even for mocks, given that my score for a uh, quant varied from forty eight to forty to forty two. So obviously, I was scoring much higher on uh -huh. the on the verbal. Yeah, I can. I, I'm looking at the 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 quant and verbal scores. They verbal thirty two, forty, thirty seven. Your last mock, you messed up big time, but Quant, yes, was was low. Yeah. So, so that's that's the last one. You actually did not give up on incorrect questions is what I'm looking at right now in the stats. Um, so you tried to solve everything in the last mock. Okay, that's good. That, that's, that's wonderful. So if you were to, if I were to ask you, hey, you know, um, if you were to advise your fellow students, you know, uh, what are three things that you should do uh, to, to ace the GMAT? Just three principles, three best practices. Could be anything. What would those three be? So you can take a few seconds, think about them, and um, give me one second. If you want to be a consultant, let me just say this: It's McKinsey's mantra. The world revolves in three. Two is too few. Four is too many. Three is just the optimal thing. So I I wouldn't want to give a whole uh I wouldn't want to drill down. I was just I would just want to point out the three driving factors towards. To which people actually mess up. Um, so I think the first one would be not to undervalue a, sec a section. Um, basically, work on your weaker parts. Um, that is that is what takes your score down. So 
if you if you if you mess up on on some if you if you have a weaker part weaker basically a weakness the test will actually um, exploit that uh, weakness and and the and the questions you would be seeing after those uh, after that particular topic would be of um, would be of would be for a less score basically there would be easier questions or medium level questions and that will hamper your ability to score a higher um, a higher score overall so i i would say that you should not um, undervalue basically any section second um i i had i actually had three things in mind um i think um, mocks yeah for the official mocks people do a, a, always say that official mocks should be used at the end of the, at the end of the preparation. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that is correct. I, I say that you use it in the beginning, you diagnose or, or in the middle just to diagnose because it's at the end of the day, it is considered to be the most apt judgment of your ability, um, the official mocks. So I would rather give them in the middle of my preparation just to know where I am going wrong and correct them then and there itself, not to wait till the last moment. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is it. And Honestly, the, um, honestly, all the mocks available, I, I wouldn't say that they are not useful. They are very useful. They get you into the habit of giving that mock, uh, the timing and everything you can judge. And even the ability, if let's say you're scoring consistently in some section, as I did with, uh, with the EG mat mocks, I, I knew for a fact that, um, I score, I, I, I was scoring well enough in, in, in the verbal section. Mm -hmm. So it was a good indicator of the ability that uh, if I'm six, uh, if I'm scoring a decent marks across four or five mocks. Mm -hmm. then it is quite dependable. So basically not to, uh, not to undervalue any mocks as well, but yeah, use your official mocks in the middle or at the beginning of the preparation. And I think I got that tip from one of, uh, one of your videos only. I think it was, it was some candidate. I don't remember, but yeah, I think I got that tip somewhere yes. from YouTube itself. Um, so that was quite helpful for me, um, not to undervalue and, uh, yeah, I think you should practice difficult questions. Um, for my quant preparation, I was making a lot of silly mistakes. Uh, basically, plus minus errors is not something I should be making. Uh, given that I I knew all of the concepts beforehand, before uh, uh, before even studying for the GMAT, I just opened my entrance exam register, just mm -hmm. flipped through it, and everything was quite um, mm -hmm. I refreshed. So basically, I was making silly errors, and I would point out that yeah, I'm making the, these five types of errors: question reading error, uh, a calculation error. So I would try to make quizzes specific to that. Uh, basically I would say, I, I would tell myself that you cannot make a calculation error in these 10 questions. And once I would not make that mistake consistently for uh, two, three quiz, I would then end up, uh, I would then add another condition to my test that you cannot make a reading error. Uh, okay. So that is how, so I wanted to drill down on the problem. So this, was, this was an iterative improvement plan based on your own self evaluation of what your weaknesses were. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they, they were they were helpful to an extent, but at the end of the day, what 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 was the most helpful for me was to difficult was to practice more and more difficult questions. Somehow, magically, I don't know how it happened, but I practiced a lot. I practiced a lot of difficult questions for quant, and I managed to cut down on my silly mistakes as well. Um, that gave me a confidence. The difficult to... questions expose those mistakes, and when you know how to correct yeah. them, of course, you exactly work. exactly. So, for a data sufficiency question, if you're not considering, let's say, something to the power zero is one. That is a common mistake. That is a common mistake, which I might make and consider it a silly mistake uh, during while, while doing easier questions, the difficult question would be based on that mistake. So if you are able to do that question correctly, you are eventually getting those silly mistakes out of the system. So those would be the three of suggestions of mine. Very well said. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's really well said. I, I, I so very, very valuable. What you said, I, I thought one thing that you would say, which in this way is, is um it helped you a lot is make notes because you made lots of notes and you revise them and you talk in detail about hey at first day it took me you know two hours to revise them but then uh progressively it took less and less time to 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 do honestly, that honestly i don't consider that as an optional thing uh i i just don't i even you would be surprised how many people do not make notes i yeah whenever i'm approaching a difficult or an important exam my notes are better and better every time. I know I I'm using red pens, black pens, blue pens, everything I can possibly to possibly to make that notes. I know for a fact that they helped me back in my school days. Uh, mm -hmm. So you discover a technique to study eventually. And uh, I know for a fact that if that has worked well for me in my 10th standard, 12th standard, 
uh, an entrance exam if it has worked well for three uh, three times it it is the trick don't discard your success factors success habits rather is what i would say yes that's true well uh Parv, this was really good uh, uh and and i'm sure people who uh, who listen to this would would take those those success factors and then apply it in their own journey so thank you um, uh, for that let me actually stop our recording